Aromas Hivarma continued looking at the poet and said, Sir. I ask you one more thing. You have extolled the praises of our Chola kings from Sibik Chakraborty to Shivananakandaradatha. All of them are as appropriate for me who was blessed to be born in this ancient clan, as it is for my little father and Mahan Kandaradatha Chola's best return, Madhuran Thakdeva. Doesn't it fit? Bulawar nodded his head to indicate yes. The eyes of all the people in the assembly turned towards Madhuran Hakativar who was sitting on the other side of Sundara Chola. They began to pay close attention to Madhurand Hagar as if they were seeing him just now. Madhurand Hakar, who had been sitting very shy before, now became more contented and kept his head bowed and still looking at Bhumadavi. In the meantime, the disguised all were Kadi and told a troubling news to Chinapalyavatarayar who took him to a corner of the hall. He saw Rakamal, a native of the Pandian country and the wife of Padakati Muragayan, among the people who had gathered for the coronation. He went further to find out why she had come here. She disappeared into the crowd near the palace of Chinap Palyavatarayar. Alwarkadayan was standing there looking around when she was seen again. She was accompanied by another woman with a child on her hip. The other girl looked like the daughter of a small farmer and Alwarkadayan was stunned for a while, not knowing what to do. It was not possible to say for sure that she was the daughter of a small farmer. He said that he could go with them for a short distance and confirm. Rakamal must have noticed that following them in the crowd was not an easy task and he kept coming. She suddenly shouted in the midst of the crowd, Oh my God! This guy is bothering us! He keeps coming and bothering the girls! She exclaimed. Immediately, many of the people who were standing there surrounded Alwarkadayan and started reprimanding him. Alwarkadayan swore to them that he had not done anything like that and that like all of them I had come to see the coronation scenes. Rakamal and another woman with a child on her hip disappeared before he left after pacifying the people who surrounded him. He searched for them up to the gate of Alwarkadayan fort. A short distance from the fort gate he saw a woman with a child climbing on a mud palak. Four horsemen stood around the palanquin. As soon as the woman got on the palak, the palak and the horses began to speed away. And before they could think whether to follow them, a large crowd of people, who had come to witness the coronation, overthrew the Alwarkadian and brought it far into the fort. Thinking it important to convey the news to the fort commander immediately, Alwarkadian arrived at the consecration hall. After Alvarkadian explained that he had put on this disguise on the order of Arulmas Hivarmar, and that he had been tasked by Pani's Selvar to come and tell him what the people were talking about in the crowd, and that he happened to witness the above event while he was fulfilling that duty, Chinapalyavatarayar believed his words completely. He was already worried about his daughter, old Madhurand Hagen's wife. Tirumala's news shocked him and caused him confusion. He told Sundara Chola through Prime Minister Anuradhar that he was going to his palace to learn the truth and that he had to leave in a hurry. There was no need for Alwarkadian to come and tell Pani's Selvar. While he was talking to Nalan Sathanar, the Tamil Pulavar, the prince was also paying attention to the small farmer. As soon as he left the hall, Pani's handsome face became brighter than before. Turning to the emperor, he said in a majestic voice, I am descended from the Sibic emperor who sacrificed his flesh to save the life of a pigeon. So like all the people of our clan, I got the surname Champion. I come from the dynasty of Manu Nidhi Chola who sentenced his son to death in order to give justice to a cow that lost its calf. All the forefathers of our clan have been renowned for being unflinching warriors on the battlefield, so they have also achieved the reputation of being unerring and infallible from the point of view of justice. Shall I, who came in their way, walk contrary to the rule of justice? Can we usurp another person's rightful property or position? All of them came before my mind's eye and gave darshan when our Asthan poet came to sing about our clan forefathers in a beautiful song poem. Raja Kesaris and Paraksaris stood in a row and gave a show. Nalanjali, Nedungili, Paranjali, and Cochanganar looked at me with compassionate eyes and said, O son of our clan! Think whether this lion is yours! They said, Vijayalayar, Adithar, Paranthagar, and Rajadathar looked at me with heroic eyes and said, Kumara. 
What heroic deed have you done to deserve to ascend this throne? Say. They asked. I hesitated to answer them. Then I strengthened my mind and bowed to them and prayed. Chiefs of the Chola clan. I have not done even one thousandth of the great things that you have done. But I am going to do such things from now on with your blessing. I am going to do things so that the fame of the Chola clan that you have established will grow and last for a long time. I am going to do practical things. I am going to understand the actions that amaze the world. I am going to receive the best wishes of all of you, who are brave warriors, and understand the admirable deeds of yours. Thus I informed my clan ancestors. They also smiled and blessed me with love. All the people in the congregation who were listening to the words spoken by Pawnee's Selver, who were overcome with passion, were enraptured. One of them yelled Vire Avel. Victory Vel. The resounding sound was heard outside the Pat Abishak Hall. It caused great agitation among the people gathered there. Pawnee's Selver, along with everyone else, chanted Victory Vel. Heroic Vel. He shouted. When the slogan was uttered he said, Father. This slogan of the Chola warriors was once heard in the time of their father Parintaka Emperor beyond Vedapena as far as the Tungabhatra, Krishna River. The Venji nations, Kalinga nations, Kalyanapurats, and Mani Yakitats beyond those rivers trembled on hearing that slogan. Still in the western and southern directions in the directions and in the eastern directions, a thousand and ten thousand Chola warriors have gone to protect the trade of this country. Father. Since the day you fell ill, the tone of the Chola hero's cry has diminished. The enemies are advancing on all sides. Venji, Kalingam, Kalyanapuram, Grant Shields also invite us to fight. They did not think about the plight of the enemies who were bringing this fruit from beyond the Himalayas in the north to the great land of India. They are jealous of the wealth of the Chola country. Mahinda is still gathering forces in Sri Lanka. Even if Veerapandian is dead, they are trying to create a riot by placing the bell crown of Pandian country on the head of someone who belongs to his clan. Mahinda and the Pandian men of danger conspired together and sought the end of the life of Aditha Kari Kalar, my beloved Tamayan who equaled Abhimanyu in Aravan in Valor. Chara King Parayathor is gathering an army of elephants and an army of woodpeckers to the west. Churin is assisted by a band of rogues fresh from the west in preparing his army of lumbermen. This is the new calamity that beset the Chola country. Father. Arabs have long excelled in the shipping industry. They go to China and do business. They often visit our country's ports. A new crowd of Arabs has now arisen, suppressing and oppressing those old Arabs who were the best in civilization, whether they are Arabs or neighboring nations, we do not know. But they are nowhere to be found who surpass them in ferocity. I myself had to witness their actions. Sundara Chola interrupted this time and said in a soft voice, Son. Don't you know the reason I sent you? He asked. They are also associated with Kalinga people. Together, the three nations have decided to completely destroy the sea trade of the Chola nation. What if the Arab nation of the sea pirates, or the Chara nation who are in many ways connected with us? If we want to save our sea trade, we must increase our navy. Thousands of new trees should be built. Have to get used to the new sailors. Add soldiers who can fight the pirates from the ship. We should plant the tiger flag on all the islands in the lower sea and station our soldiers here and there. Father. I have promised our ancestors to do all these things. They need their permission to do it. As soon as Pawnee's Selver stopped saying this, Sundara Chola said, Son. Shall I forbid you to promote the heroic fame of the Chola clan? Are the elders in this great assembly going to stop you from protecting the sea trade of the Chola nation? And then, again in the press, Vire Avel. Victory Vel. The slogan was raised. Father. You and this congregation will not forbid you. You will bless me for success in the things I undertake. If your blessing is to be fulfilled and I want to succeed in the things I have undertaken, I must first find peace in my soul. I have done nothing dishonest, and the ancestors of my clan could not approve of it. 
I have to achieve the determination that I do not understand anything, and I have not usurped what belongs to others out of desire. If I leave here after doing something against the clan's dharma, my heart will continue to grieve me. How will I fight against the enemy and win? How will I believe that we are fighting to establish dharma? For the first time in Sri Lanka, there was a great rumor that I wished to woo Singh Adana. Child! No one believed it. No one thought you were capable of such a crime, said the emperor. You would not have believed it, father. But how much pained my heart was when such talk fell upon my ears. Two of my friends know that I refused the bell crown offered to me by the Bhikkhus of Eela. They were by my side at the time. The leader of the Buddhist monks in the congregation said, Yes, yes. We know that too. A false calumny caused so much pain in my soul. If they did not believe it, there were some who believed it. If indeed I am now usurping the wealth that belongs to another, how much dishonor will it bring to this Chola clan? I will agonize over it all my life. I cannot devote my mind to any other great thing, but to be excited. Can't do. Madhurand Hakativar, who had been keeping his head down for a long time, now looked at Pani's Selvara and tried to say something. The hero went and stood next to Madhurand Hakadeva to give a signal to Pani's savior Vandiyatheva. He said in a soft voice that could only be heard in the ear, Friend! What is the first beat of the first Devar sung by Sundar Murthy Nayanar? He asked. At this point Madhurand Hakar, wondering what the question was, said, Pitta! Pirajadi! said. Vandiyathevan said with false anger, What, sir, you call me Pithan? You are not the one who is holding a woman and wandering about? Look! Your Dermapatini Punghujali is laughing at you! He said. What is this? Madhurand Hagar looked at the place where the ladies were sitting, thinking that this good friend would suddenly come to a fight like this. In fact, Pungazali did not even look at him at that time. Pungazali, Kunthave, Vanathi, Sempi and Mathavi, Vanamadavi were all the ladies of the palace who were looking at Dathumpapani's son with immense curiosity. Again, when Madhurand Hagar looked at Pani's son-in-law, he saw that he was carrying the ancient bell crown of the Chola clan in his arms. He prevented the great calamity that was about to befall this Chola clan. I have never done such a great thing for this country. Therefore I place this crown of bells on the head of Madhurandik Deva, the son of the great Kandaratata and my little father. Saying this, Pani's Selvar went near Madhurand Hagar who was sitting on the other side of the emperor and placed the crown on his head. He stood behind Vandiyadeva cautiously, holding both his shoulders in a friendly manner so that Madhurand Hagar would not prevent him from placing the crown. But Madhurandagara did not try to do anything like that. He was gazing around as if he had lost his temper and was truly mad. When he lit the crown of bells, Pani's lord said, Long life Kaparaksari Madhurandaka Adama Chola Devar. He shouted. Long life Chola Empire Emperor Adama Chola. Vandiyathevan shouted in a loud voice. The Prime Minister Anuradha and others who had been standing in awe all this time now shouted Long Live Kaparaksari Madhurandaka Chola. They shouted. As Sundara Chola Emperor Chakravarti had completely lost the power to speak due to his overwhelming emotions, he showered the many colored flowers from his hand on Madhurandaka Adama Chola. The ladies of the palace followed the emperor and showered flowers on Madhurandhagar. Madhurand Hakar got up after a little daze and went straight to the champion Mathavi and bowed down. Tears were pouring from the old woman's eyes like a waterfall. Son! Such is the Lord's grace! How can you and I walk against it? said. Pani's Selvar looked at the other poets, Bhattaras and Bhikshus gathered in the assembly and said, Now you recite your congratulatory poems as you see fit! said. They also hastily started singing congratulatory poems. Within a short time of Madhurandaka Adama Chola being crowned, the news spread among the people gathered in the streets of Tanjore. Vandiyathevan and Alvarkadian were largely responsible for its rapid spread. According to Pani's Selvar orders, 
they had stationed men here and there on the streets. Hastening to them all, he said, Long live Gopareksari Utam Kalar Devar. They shouted that. Word of mouth spread rapidly among the people that Prince Arulmas Hivarma had handed over the kingdom that had been given to him to his younger father Madhurand Hagar and that he was going to set out soon with a large fleet of ships to suppress the pirates. Some believed this immediately. They considered this to be appropriate for Pawnee's rich personality. Others said, who will give the empire that they have got to another? They wondered. Tens of thousands of voices that spoke in many ways throughout the ages said, Long live! Hail! The shouts sounded together like the echoes of a stormy sea. All the doubts of the people were cleared when Madhurandaka Uttamach Kalar Bhavani, sitting on a golden amberi mounted on an ornate silk elephant for a while, left. The excitement of the people crossed the limit when they saw that the person sitting on the elephant's pedestal on the elephant's neck was Pawnee's lord. Long live Gopareksari Madhurandaka Uttamachola! The voices of the people rang out. But in their hearts was the activism of Pani Selvara. At the thought of it, their faces blossomed like their insides. Pani Selvarmani crowning her, the people now let out many times more jubilation than the people would have had if Bhavani had arrived. Scholars rejoiced that Pani Selvar had surpassed Karakal Puruvalathana, who engraved the tiger's mark on the Himalayan peak, and that he had engraved his mark on the Tyaga peak forever. Ordinary people are not looking for such decorations and Upamanas. The sight of Madhurand Hakar driving Pawnee's silver elephant with a crown of bells on his head thrilled their souls. Dancing, singing, laughing, congratulating and hugging each other, sprinkling flowers and splashing yellow axathi, people forgot themselves in the same tumult. It was not an easy task to move the elephant among the huge crowd who were in a frenzy of excitement. Pawnee's lord took no haste and took care of the gaiety of the people, and every time he saw a familiar face, he said something funny and led the elephant along slowly. By the time we got back to the palace after the street crawl, it was late evening and early night. Street lights competed with the stars in the sky. Flowers showered from the top of the palace. Elephant! Elephant! A sweet voice asked. When Pawnee's Selvar looked up, Vanatha's smiling face appeared there. Girl! Fear not! In Madhurandaka Uttamachola's Dharma kingdom, the elephant and the tiger will mix and mate, the cat and the parrot will gather together and play in the cocoon. Said Pawnee's Selvar.